Greetings and salutations. I see some new faces out there tonight. How are y'all? Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Now please be prepared, because we are about to embark into a mission to go where no one has ever gone before. Welcome to Lockdown 23 and 1. It's story time tonight. I hope y'all guys got your warm glasses of milk, tea, scrumpets, chocolate chip cookies, whatever you want, whatever gets you ready for bedtime. Because we're going to be doing some wonderful stories. I got two, like I said, man, I'm having too much fun on YouTube, man. I got two stories coming y'all's way tonight. Jail stories from Virginia Beach City Jail. Okay? I haven't done no jail stories in a while. I've done a few streets and prisons. I don't think I've done any jail ones lately. So I figured I'd mix it up a bit. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the first story, okay? It's about a homeless man that liked to come to jail on purpose to escape the wintry nights of the streets during wintertime. Uh, this guy said he was a veteran at doing this stuff. He would commit small crimes just to get locked up and stay warm for the winter, which was absolutely absurd to me. I would rather freeze in a halfway house or something than go back into jail. But this guy did it, man. He's done it for a long time, supposedly what he said, and I believed him. He looked like a trained homeless man. He was trained to go, and he was a little weird, too. He's a little, little, uh, he had some loose marbles. Anyways, this guy, th let me just tell you how this guy was, okay? This whole story is about how he uh, obtained food, okay? Uh, this guy, man, he used to go and be the first person in line to the chow hall. I mean, not chow hall, well, when the trays come in the door. Uh, he would be first one in line. He would wait there for about 40 minutes before they even got there. He would be standing there like they're about to be there any second when everyone knew that they wouldn't be there for like 40 minutes to an hour. This guy was starving, man. And, you know, that's how you know he had a few loose marbles. Because even when I don't have, if I didn't have any food, because I, I really never, you know, I always had canteen. I always did. You know, I always had family or someone give me canteen. But when I did go on those stretches and I might not have had anything at all, I would never go sit and wait an hour before at the door looking like a pure addict for those uh, state trays. It ain't happening. So that's how you know the guy had a few loose marbles. So yeah, this guy sat in front of the line all the time waiting an hour before the trays came. And he would be the first one to grab the tray and he would walk to the table, eat his tray super fast, and he would go back and sit over there where everyone drops their trays off at. Okay? He would eat all the leftover food and whatever people didn't eat. He would eat it all. So I never understood how he was so hungry because he would literally eat so much food every time a tray came through, okay? And everyone uh, found this very uh, hilarious, okay? Because after a few days of seeing this guy do it, people started making seagull sounds at him and stuff. You know, seagulls are birds that live in the bay or they live by the beach and they, they pretty much eat freaking anything they can find, okay? I could flick a cigarette butt on the ground and that thing, a uh, seagull in the summertime comes swoop that thing up and eat it like it's nothing. So I stopped flicking cigarette butts near seagulls. I don't want to meet my, eating them things. That's, that's me. Anyways, I caught a seagull midair, by the way, too. That's another story, another day. That was a good one. Uh, but so, yeah, this guy would go pick all the freaking food off the trays, and uh, people would be like, Caw, 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 caw. Lucy, Lucy's getting worked up. She don't like the seagull sounds. Anyway, so yeah, everyone would make those seagull sounds as soon as he went to the trays, man. And he would get a little mad, I could tell. But everyone was doing it. And then it went a few weeks, man. People were just dying every time. Like in the morning times, we would come out at 5 in the morning, eat a tray. Everyone would be so tired. But as, as soon as people start walking their cells, you'll hear a random guy that's in his cell be like, and he would start it, and it would just crank the whole pod up, man. Every single day, we were just having a blast off of this guy. And uh, this one particular day, someone 
did something that pretty much started a riot, okay? It wasn't really a physical riot. It was more of a hilarious riot. This one guy uh, decided they wanted to throw something at him, throw some canteen at him. You know, they are like, you so freaking hungry here, take this. And they're winging brownies and uh, a couple honey buns and a bag of chips. And the guy was just, you know, picking them up. He didn't care anything about what was going on, man. He didn't care what they were doing. He started picking them up. And then you could tell the broke people, the broke people were throwing rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> like, they, didn't, they weren't giving up their food, man. They are going to throw rolls of toilet paper, though. And that's when he started getting mad. Uh, people were hitting him with rolls of toilet paper. And he went to the hole, man. That, that was pretty much the end of that. Someone ruined that because of some toilet paper. I was so mad because I was having so much fun fun with the seagull sounds man but it was absolutely hilarious and he went to the hole with all that food that them people threw him wasn't much but it started a riot man everyone started throwing stuff at him and it was just absolutely hilarious i don't know if any of y'all have ever experienced someone that eats the scraps off of everybody's tray but it's pretty wild and it is funny anyways that's story number one let's jump straight into story number two okay this is about one of the nastiest raunchiest guys I've ever met ever in the city jail okay and this is in Virginia Beach City Jail as well and this guy man he was so nasty he never took showers he probably took a shower once every five to six days okay and it wouldn't even be a real shower sometimes it would just be a bird bath he said he had a phobia of the shower so you know sooner or later someone was going to kick him out of cell but the guy that he was bunking with was just some pushover guy you know he ain't gonna say nothing or start nothing he's just gonna stay out the way but we used to go down to that cell all the time you know we would go in his cell and just mess with him man we kinda uh, messed with his bunkie but they didn't really we didn't really care for him at all Any, anyone in there we just went over there to really just talk about nothing and just kill time man some people's cells, you really don't have no interest in them, but you would go over there just see what, what are you doing? You know what I mean? What's up, man? What you got to eat? You got anything to eat? You know, just mess with them, man. Just kill time, small talk. Because, you know, inmates watch other inmates. For real. They sit there and they scope everything out. The veteran inmates, they really can see everything going on. And we, that's how we noticed he never took showers. We're like, yo, we were playing cards all of a sudden and we are like, Bro, does that dude ever take a shower? Has anyone ever seen that guy jump in the shower? And I was like, I don't know, man. And sure enough, we started watching him a few days. He never got in a shower. And it was like the sixth day that we stopped watching him because he got in the shower. Then we rolled up on him. We were like, hey, do you ever change your sheets? You know, we were getting on him, man. We were messing with him. We were killing time. And he's like, yeah, I change my sheets every time. And weeks went by. We had seen him ever change sheets ever, okay? And this particular night, we are like, man, we're going to find out for real how long it takes for him to change his sheets. So, you know, the diabetics had this snack bag that would come out through the nighttime, and it would be like a bag of cheese and whatever else uh, diabetics get. And it, was, it came in a brown paper bag. And the guy that I was hanging out with, you know, he was like, I'm going to take a dump in this bag right now, and I'm going to put it underneath his mattress. We're going to see how long it takes for him to notice that there's a bag of crap under his bed, under his mat. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to be absolutely hilarious, man. And I was like, God, I was like, don't do it, man. Don't do it, man. Deep down, I was like, oh, man, this is going this is to be fun. Sorry, Luce. I just scared Lucy. But it was messed up. But for real, the guy was asking for it, man. I mean, he would never change his sheets. And that's like, you're going to get Mercer or something from Mercer, whatever you call it. And uh, so it was harmless, you know, it wasn't nothing, you know, crazy. If he found out, it would just get on his mattress. And uh, sure enough, you know, days went by and this guy never noticed anything. But we would walk in the cell and we could smell it. I mean, we, were, we could smell the crap. And <laughs> we would just die laughing. And the guy was like, yo, what's, what's wrong? What's, what are you what's, what's going on? And it's sure enough, man, weeks went by. Weeks went by with this thing underneath this guy's mattress. It came times where I forgot all about it. I mean, we even stopped joking him because it got old. And then, uh, sure enough, he changes his sheets one day, right? And he starts snapping. He starts snapping at the CO at his door because they would lock people in while they changed his sheets. They would 
give the sheets out and you push the dirty sheets out the uh, window. That's why we couldn't never really see if he was doing it or not. And uh, this particular day he changed his sheets, it was weeks later, and he found out there was crap under his bed the whole time and then he was crying to the CO, asking for detergent and cleaning materials and a new mattress. And then they tried running the cameras back to figure out who did it. Man, you gotta run back weeks of footage to figure out, figure that out, my friends. <laughs> that freaking crap has been sitting there for weeks. And that guy never changed his sheets, man, or else he would have known. That's how we proved to him that he was a liar. And he knew exactly what was going on after it all happened, you know what I mean? But he couldn't prove nothing. And if he did try proving something, it would have been bad news for him. For real. Anyways, he was lucky that he didn't get ran up on after just by telling the police what happened. He should have just cleaned it up with some soap and water and kept it moving, for real. But he got spared. But it was absolutely hilarious, man. And, you know, I don't recommend anyone doing this type of stuff. Uh, but it's just stories of my life. So don't let nobody take it personal, man. It's all fun and games when you're on lockdown 23 and 1. Anyways, those are two crazy stories for y'all tonight, man. There are, I guess there are more of a situation where you had to be there to experience it, to really understand how freaking hilarious it all was really was funny. So I'm going to be streaming tonight probably around uh, 9. I'm going to stream, live stream on YouTube for an hour and then I'm going to stream on Twitch at 10. I was supposed to do it last night but I didn't get to it. I had other obligations. <laughs> Anyways man, until the next time, don't forget to hit that freaking subscribe button and that like button, but only if you like me.